in all seriousness, running shoes. We hand out this little list to a lot of our patients that put all the running shoes in different categories, neutral, stability, motion control, lightweight, walking, and trail. But today, I'd like us to have an understanding of why they're in those categories and what kind of patients we should put in those categories. I'm gonna start with neutral shoes, okay? And by the definition of neutral, it means that it is a shoe that doesn't have any varus or valgus correction, meaning your foot doesn't curve like this, it doesn't curve like that, you don't pronate or supinate, you're a neutral person, okay? Most of those patients have a normal foot. Well, we never see normal people. So usually the normal foot type is someone with a slightly high arch or someone who has just a little bit of pronation and has an orthotic in it. It, a lot of running stores will tell you you should never put an orthotic in a stability shoe. I can tell you that I've been running in a stability shoe with orthotics for over 40 years and I've never had a problem. And if I go to a neutral shoe, I pronate too much. So there is no hard and fast, but I will tell you that if you have somebody in an orthotic that is under 150 pounds, no, I don't weigh over 150, but if you have somebody that's under 150 pounds or is a child, normally we can put them in a neutral shoe. Anybody over 150 pounds for women and 200 for men, even if they have a normal foot type, should go into a stability shoe, okay? Anybody over 250 in a guy should go to a motion control shoe. Woman over 200 should go to a motion control shoe. Now, why do we have three neutral shoes? And Lori's already making faces at me. Am I talking too fast? Mm -hmm. Okay. You gave me just a very short period of time. Um, why do we have three neutral shoes, okay? What do you notice is the difference between the bottom of these two shoes? You may notice nothing, but what I notice is this one is very straight and wide based, okay? Straight and wide based. This one has more of a curved base to it. Now, if you notice, if you take these two and look at them, they're also not quite the same, okay? This is the Ghost. The Ghost is your lower end neutral shoe doesn't have a lot of super flexibility in side to side, so it still gives them some stability there. Has a lot of flexibility in the forefoot, and basically it's gonna hold their foot into the position that it is. It's not gonna correct it one way or another, but it's gonna hold them. This is a very nice shoe for like little old ladies who like to go walking, okay? Men who wear orthotics that, as I said, are, are under 180 pounds or so. Um, it's a very good walking shoe. It's also great for kids who are running, because it's nice and light, okay? And it really gives good traction for walking more than anything else, okay? What's the difference? Why do we go to a Defiance? Wider base, holds an orthotic really well, okay? But still has a lot of flexibility and will hold their foot where it is. Notice this big bar right here actually holds the orthotic a little bit better. This is a more expensive shoe. It's got a little bit more cushioning to it, much better for runners, okay? So walkers and very light runners, a little bit heavier runner or somebody who's wearing an orthotic and is running a lot of mileage. Light mileage, heavier mileage, neutral shoes. Why do I have a third shoe? This is the Dyad, super wide base. This is your person with a very big foot, meaning wide fleshy foot. It's got more depth to it. So for example, this actually works well as a diabetic shoe with a diabetic inlay in it in somebody who doesn't really need a lot of correction for deformity. This also works well for walking shoes for a little bit heftier people that need the cushion. You can have a really high arch foot, but it's kind of fat or kind of wide. Fat's probably not what I should say, but a little wide. And this will give you a lot of cushion and with a correction of an orthotic can be a great shoe for somebody who's a little bit heavier. Okay, now what's interesting is that if you take the bottom of the dyad and the bottom of the addiction, you'll notice that they're about the same width. This is the aerial, which is its big sister, again, about the same width. This is gonna be your wider foot. And you notice the difference between the ghost and the dyad? Okay, so if somebody's in a ghost and it's too tight, you don't say, oh, let me get you a wide one. A lot of times they need width through the whole thing. Because remember, in a wider shoe, sometimes they're only wider here. You now, so this one is gonna give them a little bit more for that fleshier foot. So that's neutral shoes. Any questions on neutral shoes? What's the purple one again? The glycerin. 
This is your running shoe. I wouldn't put a walker on this because of the higher expense. It's a little bit more bang for your buck. And unless they're doing a lot of walking, I mean like if they're gonna do the Avon three day walk or something like that. Um, but uh, otherwise, I would put them more into the ghost. Any other questions about neutral shoes? What is the defiance? Well, that's an interesting question because that's the next one. The defiance is a light guidance shoe. You might notice on your shoe list that we give out that it is in the neutral category, but it's really one step up, okay? It has this little bar right here, okay? And it's got a little bit more of a curve to it than say the adrenaline, which is its big sister. This shoe is kind of an oddball because it's really meant for somebody who is a higher arched foot, okay, but needs just a little bit of guidance. So it's gonna give them a little bit more oomph in the arch, but it's not gonna push their foot over or give them a lot of medial stability like a stability shoe. So really there's no good category to put this in except slightly in between. So if somebody's running in the glycerin and they're like, you know, I'm just getting a little plantar fasciitis in their glycerin or I feel like I need a little bit more arch support or they're running in the ghost and the glycerin doesn't fit or they don't wanna go into this shoe because they feel like it's a little wide because it is a little wide, the Defiance is a nice shoe for them, okay? Again, slightly more curved, little tiny bit of stability, but not a totally stable shoe because it doesn't have a lot of medial support. Um, a little bit heavier walker tends to like the Defiance. A runner who's running under 20 miles a week and needs just a little bit more arch support, that kind of thing. Up from that, we have two flavors in the Adrenaline. If you notice the difference between the two shoes, okay, the only real difference is the lugs on the bottom and the mesh on the top. These are prettier. Um, this is a trail shoe. This is the Adrenaline uh, ASR, which is your off-road shoe. And this is your Adrenaline GTS. What does GTS stand for? Go-to Go to shoe. shoe. Because you can put almost 80% of the population in this shoe and it will fit them and feel good. It also comes in widths, okay? This is the second most popular running shoe in the United States at this point. Comes in multiple different colors and literally you can almost put anybody in it and it's gonna feel good but it does have this big medial post to it. So it is a stability shoe. It is not a heavy shoe, like when we get to the Addiction and the Aerial, but it is a stability shoe that's going to take the post of their orthotic and actually invert them slightly. So if, they're, if they have an orthotic and they're still proning just a little bit and you don't wanna to go to a heavy shoe, you know, put them in a stability shoe, it's gonna be fine. All right, if they don't, if they have an over-the-counter orthotic and they don't want to go to a custom orthotic to get more posting, you can get more posting from the shoe. This is not for somebody with a big, wide, fleshy foot. This is your average foot, though, you know, and oftentimes I'll start with this shoe and how, see how they walk, see how they feel, and they either go down to a ghost or up to an addiction, you know, depending on, this is a really good gauge of fit more than anything else. Um, these do tend to run just a teeny bit small. So when in doubt, go up half a size, okay? But that's your adrenaline. And the only difference between these two shoes is the lugs on the bottom. So if somebody wants to walk in the trail shoe, just tell them that this is meant to be on trails, okay? But it's fine to walk around outside. It's just if you're spending all day, unless you're walking on concrete all day, you may slip a little bit on carpeting, that kind of thing. All right. That's stability shoes. Any question about that? They do make a little bit heavier stability shoe called the Transcend. It is a significantly more expensive shoe, so we don't tend to carry it, but we can order it. It is meant for higher distance mileage runners. Okay, I run in the Transcend, okay? But at $175, most people are not going to buy those. And they're basically the big sister to the Adrenaline. The reason I run in the Transcend is because it gives me just a tiny bit more toe box room and they last a little bit longer for me than the Adrenaline. And again, I've been wearing them with an orthotic for years and it's not a problem and I certainly am not a big heavy person. Big sisters, this is the Addiction. The Addiction Walking is the most commonly used diabetic shoe. Why? 
because it's got extra depth, it's got lots of medial posting, it comes in multiple widths, and for women it will go all the way out to 2E. This is your big girl shoe, okay? This is a walking shoe. Even though it says it's a runner, if you have a runner that needs a big girl shoe, you go to the Ariel. In the men, it's called the Beast, and they didn't want women wearing Beast, so they called the Ariel, it sounds better, a mermaid mm -hmm. shoe. Um, it's a lot heavier, so no one wants to walk in this heavy shoe, hence why the addiction is much more popular, okay? But if you're running high mileage and you're a big girl, go to the Ariel, okay? Again, comes in multiple widths, and really the biggest difference between these two shoes is this post right here. This is meant for running. You can see the plastic post there. Notice the addiction doesn't have it, okay? Good stability. This is a motion control shoe but this is a big girl motion control shoe, okay? And especially the Beast, which is the men's version of the Ariel, and to be honest, some years the colors are so close you could put them next to each other and think it's the same shoe, but the men's version of, of the Beast is meant for a 250 pound guy to run a marathon, wow. okay? And we have patients that need that, that are working on their weight loss program and, and they're out there, or they're six foot 10, you know? Gives them the stability that they need. Almost no one would wear an aerial with an orthotic in unless they have a very wide uber flat, I mean flat to the ground foot, okay? The addiction on the other hand, sometimes you just need that little oomph in the right direction and so it's not unheard of to put an orthotic in addic addiction. But say they put the addiction on and they're like, you know what, I feel like I'm overcorrected and you watch them walk and they're actually overcorrected. So then you just go down to, to either the adrenaline or you go straight to the dyad because the dyad is literally the same exact last, which in English means it's where the shoe is cut from, okay? So this shoe is going to feel exactly like this shoe, except without the posting. So baby sister, middle sister, big sister. Make sense? Same last. All right, just like the adrenaline and the ghost are cut from the same last. So if the ghost fits and they need a little bit more shoe, go to the adrenaline because it's gonna fit exactly the same. But if it doesn't fit and they need more width, then you go to the dyad or you go up to the addiction or the aerial. Any questions about that? Okay. Can you do the order of little sister, big sister again and name the shoe? Because they all look the same to me. Okay, that's easy. All right. So, we have neutral shoes over here, an in-between shoe here, stability, and motion control. In your neutral shoes, you have the Ghost, you have the Glycerin, and you have the Dyad. The big sister to the Ghost is going to be your Adrenaline, okay? The big sister to the Dyad is going to be the Addiction, and the even bigger sister is the Aerial. Do I need to go through that again? Do you want me to write it down for you? I'm trying to write it down, but you keep skipping. So do little, medium, big, in the order of, like, just do the straight order. Okay, ghost. Yep. Big sister, adrenaline. Got it. Okay, dyad. Big sister, addiction. Bigger sister, aerial. Got it. Okay. Dyad, addiction, right. aerial. Any other questions about running shoes? So, you have a patient who comes in and the doctor told them that they need a stability shoe and they have an orthotic. They put their stability adrenaline on and they have the orthotic and they're still pronating. You go up to the addiction. They have the orthotic on and they're like, wow, I feel like I'm walking on the outside of my foot. You put them in either the dyad or the ghost, depending on the width of their foot, okay? You have a patient who comes in who has plantar fasciitis or irritation of their heel and they're really, they're doing okay with a linko or they just want a light linko, all right? And they need some stability because they have a relatively flat foot. You go straight to the adrenaline, watch them walk with their linko and the adrenaline and then at that point decide whether or not they need to go up, down, or stay right there. When in doubt, your adrenaline is your go-to shoe. Again, you can put 80% of the population in this shoe and they're gonna be comfortable. Okay, your glycerin and your defiance are really more running shoes. 
The Transcend is their bigger sister. We don't carry it because it is a uber expensive running shoe that unless you're running 50 miles a week, you're probably not gonna spend the money for it, okay? If you are in the glycerin and you still feel like you're moving around a little bit more, go to the Defiance. It's got just that little bit of posting to it, okay? But again, this shoe is cut slightly curved for a higher arch foot. But there's lots of people that have a high arch foot when they're just sitting there and then they pronate to the ground when they flatten out their foot. That would be me. So I look like I have this skinny little foot, right? But literally, I, I'm walking on the inside of my ankle when I have nothing on my foot. Okay? So. See that, Dr. Crane? You want to see that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, not today. Okay. Right. We'll show and tell another day <laughs> when I have a pedicure. I have a, I have a question. Sure. So why are Brooks shoes better than like a Nike shoe? Okay, that's actually a really good question. The reason that we stick with Brooks shoes is because we get very consistent results from them. I can take 10 of their shoes, line them up to, against each other, and they have the same exact shoe. Versus, not that I'm slamming any other shoe company, but there are companies that spend a lot more money on flash and advertising and don't spend as much money on quality control. And you can take 10 of their shoes and you have 10 different shoes. So uh, it, there's also some companies that have multiple different factories that make the same exact shoe. And so if you get one from, that was made in the Philippines and you compare it to one that was made in China, you may have two different shoes because they were made on slightly the same last, but because the manufacturing differences between countries, they can be really different shoes. Also, what I like about Brooks more than anything else than their quality control is number one, because I think that's important, but number two is they have a shoe for every foot type. They have a shoe for every body type. Because you can have a super skinny little person that has a high arch foot that's perfect for this ghost, but you can also have a 300 pound woman with a wide flat foot that is perfect for this aerial and wants to run, you know? so. Since we have to have something to offer to everybody, because if you look at our population, we have one of everything, you know, that's why I can get a whole spectrum of shoes with similar fit, you know, basically two different types of fit. You know, we have our wider group and our skinnier group, and basically in one shoe company. The other reason, too, is I think Medicare guidelines allow New Balance and, and Brooks only the two, right? That, I, I really, I, you know, that has been updated so many different times that I really don't know. Mm -hmm. But I do know that the Addiction, the Addiction Walker, the Beast, and the Ariel are all Sadmark, oh, and the Dyad are all Sadmark approved. So uh, I can't say anything for other shoe companies because I don't look at them. Mm -hmm. So, okay.